This month of love, the Ola 7 podcast show aims to impact positively 70,000 less privileged girls and women as part of our corporate social responsibility through donating sanitary wear. Donate $7 to support 10 girls through providing them with sanitary wear. Reduce school absenteeism and the risk of infections. Men, support your women and girls. We are asking you, yes you, to propose an area for donation by simply typing your preferred area to donate. The area with the most mentions will receive the donation on the 26th of February, 2024. Nomination of places ends on the 23rd. Contact the numbers on screen now to make your donation. The All A 7 Podcast Show. It's now making sense. Hello guys, my name is DJ Ola7 Owen, away Kwama Donda, the Chief Air Marshal on your number one podcast show, the Ola7 Podcast Show. It is the most, you know, <laughs> electrifying show, it's the Genius Kids Show, a show that exhibits the gifted, intelligent, talented, extraordinary kids here in Zimbabwe. The only platform that features uh, kids of all ages, you know, and uh, today we have uh, an exciting guest, yeah, uh, she's, um, she's the spelling bee a champion, she's here with us, and um, she's just 12 years, and she's an avid reader, versatile, and sophisticated artist who enjoys working with mixed medium. She, uh, she has represented um, her former school, uh, the vocal and instrumental S-Fords. Um, she's also passionate about, uh, you know, art and photography. Uh, it's none other than Tashinga Sharen. She's here to tell us more about herself. So, guys, welcome Tashinga on the Genius Kids Show. Um, thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here. You're very excited. I can see that you're very, very excited. Only 12 years old. 12 years. I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm like... Just 12, and, you know, I'm looking at the profile, your profile, what you've done, what you've achieved so far, and your age is it's not telling. It's not telling. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> Why? How did you manage to, to do that? Um, I don't know. I just somehow... <laughs> okay. No, that's fine. So, um, like I said, you're a visitor. Uh, I mean, you, you read, you do art, music, swimming, learning, um, also learning French, by the way. Wow. Yes, I am. And, uh, of course, the spelling B. So, uh, tell us about yourself. Who is Tashinga uh, Sharon? Well, you have said a lot in your um, prelude, but one thing I can say is that I don't give up. Mm-hmm. I'm very tenacious. Like, if I have my heart set on something, I won't um, quit. I'll go right to, to mm-hmm. the end. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's very, very, very powerful. So you are the first child, I mean, uh, and uh, the only girl. Being the first, you know, comes with the responsibilities. What's your take? How are you doing uh, so far, considering you have got, um, you know, siblings uh, who look up to you? Um, well, since I have three brothers, I can't say I try. Um, I read to them, mm-hmm. and also Lego. I mean, I don't really see a lot of people playing with Lego, but I play with Lego with my little brother, mm-hmm. and games too, try help them with their homework. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't really hear of girls playing on an Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> so you help them with their, their homework as well. So you are the eldest. And uh, the other one, so you're like, you're very intelligent, right? Even in school. What Normally, what numbers do you, you know, take number one, first position, number two in class? Um, well, I was the top of the Wow. Top of the class. Shh, guys. The pressure I have a show, guys. Ah, the, the, the profile is just too much. And she's going to tell us more about herself, more about art, more about, you know, music, and also photography, by the way. So she's just 12, but the introduction, the profile is just too much. So um, you are passionate about art. What inspired uh, your passion? Um... Well, I've always um, seen myself as a creative person, so I decided to express myself through art. Mm-hmm. I can say I was inspired by another painter um, that I saw on social media, Ash Van Harrison. Mm-hmm. His style of art is really creative, mm-hmm. imaginative, and free. Mm-hmm. Art really allows you to relax and 
self-express mm-hmm. okay. and um, I, I I love the part where you, where you say the self-express. How do you you know express yourself? I mean, art doesn't have to be like a set picture. You don't always have to paint sceneries. Mm-hmm. You can also do abstract, like mm-hmm. um, splatter painting. Mm-hmm. That's really, especially on the days when you're not in a good mood. Yeah, that's really. A <laughs> <way> that's <laughs> well, especially <laughs> when you are just maybe moody, you are not feeling it. Okay. So, uh, working with mixed media in your art, you know, um, how did it all start? Or it's a gift that you're born with? I can't say it was a gift. Um, practice always makes perfect. I mean, mm-hmm. some of the first pictures I painted, <sighs> can't even look at them and say this was <laughs> me. Yeah. But I got better over time. Mm-hmm. And I was also inspired by Barry Lungu. Mm-hmm. I really like his... Um, the way he puts in everyday life mm-hmm. and African heritage into his paintings. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you were inspired by, by him as well. Yes. Uh, now, now it makes sense. I get it. So who taught you? Or ma- is it self-taught? Um, it was self-taught. Self-taught. Wow. So now there's an element of being, I mean, a, a gift there, you know. <laughs> yes, of course, it's, you say the practice makes perfect, but at the same time, I'm sure the gift is there. Self-taught and... Maybe, uh, do you have something to show us, uh, you know, uh, some of your paintings or your art, your artwork? Um, yes. Mm-hmm. This painting um, was inspired by um, Ashvin Harrison. Mm-hmm. I kind of adapted okay. his style of painting. Mm-hmm. So what, 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 what is this, by the way? Let me, let me see. What, what is this? A lion? Looks like a lion? Yes, it is. Wow. Guys, look at this. <laughs> It's a lion, it's a lion, it's a lion. Wow. So how long did it take you to come up with this uh, drawing? Um, well, sometimes I'll have an idea, mm-hmm. then I'll paint, and then the inspiration just stops. Mm-hmm. And then I take, you know, a little break, and yes. then I come back, mm-hmm. and I keep getting ideas throughout the painting. Yes. So yes. I carry on incorporating mm-hmm. different mm-hmm. Um, colors and pictures. Mm. So I, I see blue here. I see uh, the other eyes green and black, and this one has blue and black. Why different eyes? Um, Colors. I can say I couldn't decide between green and yeah. blue, so mm-hmm. I put both of them. Oh, uh, it makes sense. Hey, look at the nose. <laughs> this is just amazing. You are very, very, very creative, um, Atashinga. So, uh, do you have plan to exhibit your, you know, your works in future? Um, I don't really plan to, but I have had some of my art exhibited at a school level, mm-hmm. and some of them I do exhibit in my grandmother's house, like this one. It is at your grandmother's house. Wow, let me see it again. I have my own art exhibition there. Oh, ah, nice, amazing, guys! Look at this! Look at this! Yeah. Ah, we've got amazing kids here in Zimbabwe, guys. Ah, uh, guys. A uh, round of applause. Can I must not jealous. So this is like um, it looks like a face of someone. Um, it was kind of abstract. Uh-huh. I got inspired by um my trip to Uganda, mm-hmm. so I painted it after I came back from from Uganda. Yes. Okay. Um, the butterfly has the colors of the Ugandan flag. Oh, oh yes, this is a butterfly. Yes, sure. And what's this? Bird? Yes, a bird. Is this a nest? I'm not really. It was like the, you uh-huh. know, just colors. All oh, colors. And this? Um, a vine with flowers, like hummingbirds, how they, uh-huh. you know, can I say eat? I mean, take nectar from flowers. Uh, yes, so yes. I put some flowers there. Then what's this? Um, that's like, that's a face. Uh-huh. This, is a, this is a nose, like a mouth, an eye. Oh, interesting. So, butterfly. <laughs> Guys, how did you come up with this? Honestly, like I'm, I'm just, there's a butterfly here, but it's just coming out, you know, nice. Um, I was really inspired by Uganda. Mm-hmm. So, I put all, the, all my feelings into that yes. art piece. Okay, okay. When, when did you go to uh, Uganda? Um, early December. Early December, uh, 2023. Okay, okay, okay. No, that's fine. Interesting. So... 
Uh, you also loved reading, you know, uh, you also love reading, about, uh, by the way, as well. Um, what's your favorite genre and uh, why is it your, your favorite? Um, it changed over time. Like <laughs> when I was in grade three and four, you had to have Wimpy Kid. Wimpy Kid was the it thing. Mm -hmm. And then it moved on to Rodal and then Dr. Zeus also. Mm -hmm. And then I became more keen um, with Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys as well. Mm -hmm. And a bit of fantasy like Harry Potter and mm -hmm. Chronicles of Narnia. And then it finally landed on Afrofuturism. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about that Afrofuturism. Uh, um, You're interested in that uh, particular subject, Afrofuturism. Have you read um, any novels in line with that? Um, yes, I have. Which ones? Um, Binti and Ikenga by Nnedi Okorafor. Mm. I really enjoy and I really enjoyed reading the book. Mm -hmm. I like the way she uses African heritage mm -hmm. and then a sprinkle of fantasy. Mm -hmm. So any, any, any takeaways from that book? Um, from Ikenga, yeah. I can say, well, mostly was about a boy who was the son of the police chief and his father got shot. So he gets a, a little statue, mm -hmm. like a little clay thing that he puts in his pocket. Mm -hmm. And whenever he touches it, he transforms into a big, well, man, mm. maybe seven foot. And he spends most of his time trying to avenge his father's death. Mm. Okay, okay. So uh, the most interesting book you have read so far, what, wa what was it all about? Um, the most interesting books I've read, um, Binti, it's a trilogy by Nadia Korofo. Mm -hmm. It's about a girl in their village, they don't usually go to school. Mm -hmm. They focus mainly on cultural practices. So one day she goes um, to a university, which is actually another planet, mm -hmm. um, on a spaceship. And while they're in that spaceship, they get attacked by, um, can I say aliens? Mm -hmm. Well, they are aliens. Oh, yeah. And she's the last one on the ship. Mm. And then once she gets there, her family isn't happy about it. Mm -hmm. So she never really goes back to her village. Mm -hmm. And I like the way they say, I don't know what it was that she puts mm -hmm. like clay and flower oils on mm -hmm. her face. Yeah. I think it's Ojais. Um, I think they do put that in some African um, cultures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> I'm actually learning as he uh, is you know, uh, talking. I'm actually learning one or two things there. So, um, any Shona novels um, on your book list? If so, what is the title of the book and what is it all about? Um, I have read some by Ignatius Mabasa, mm -hmm. but I do wish um, Shona novels were more readily accessible. Mm -hmm. um, like my teacher, um, my Shona teacher from school said, I wish there were a lot more of them mm -hmm. so everybody can... Mm -hmm sort of read them and oh enjoy yeah. them. So you're saying they're not, uh, they're not that uh, accessible? Mm -hmm. They are scarce. Or maybe you way to find them. Do you know where to find them or it's where to get the books? Um, I know there are some, but they're not. Um, can I say I wish there were more? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Now I get it. So, uh, the Spelling Bee competition. You were crowned the Spelling Bee champion in Harare and represented Zimbabwe in the African uh, Spelling Bee competition in Uganda in early December, like you said, 2023. You came third, and that is a huge achievement, Tashinga. What inspired you to take part in the uh, competition? Um, my first Spelling Bee, surprisingly, I wasn't all that enthusiastic mm -hmm. about it. I didn't have any plans to enter, but my grade 7 teacher, uh, Mrs. Raman, mm -hmm. She is very, um, she's very um, encouraging and motivational. Yeah. She actually encouraged me to do it. Mm -hmm. And so I took part and I came first. Wow. So tell me, how did you feel when you were crowned the spelling, the, um, the spelling bee in Harare, the champion? It felt very exciting because I knew that Wow, I can actually spell mm -hmm. because when I got there, I thought, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this is tough, man. 
there were a lot of children and yes, yes. I can imagine. Everybody was set on first place. Mm-hmm. And everybody was really good. And I thought, okay, maybe if I go there and mm-hmm. you know, it's all about the experience. But yes. then I got into the top twenty and I said, Okay. Mm-hmm. Then the top ten and I really became determined about it towards mm-hmm. the end. Mm-hmm. And I felt more confident yes. as I continued to spell words mm-hmm. during the competition. Yes. And you, you came out first. Wow. Out of 20 people, you were more than 20. More than 200. More than 200. And you were the first one, the only number one. Guys, this is just amazing. I'm talking to Tashinga here, a spelling bee champion. So how did you, uh, how did you prepare for the competition? I read a lot of books. This is something I can't say enough. Um, Children especially, everybody needs to read books. Mm -hmm. Um, Children in Zimbabwe especially and in Africa and all around the world, I can't emphasize reading enough. It's very important. You learn more words from the book, can I say, than you would from the word list. Yes. And you'll remember, if you've read this book, that, oh, they said it was very mysterious. Mm -hmm. And you'll remember the spelling of the word. Everybody needs to read. Oh, that's powerful. So how supportive uh, were your parents and your siblings during that uh, course of the competition? Um, They were very supportive. Mm -hmm. I mean, even my three-year-old brother can now spell cake. Mm. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) What is he? He's three. Three. Oh, he can spell cake. Wow, that's fantastic. Okay, so how was Uganda? You mentioned that you were in Uganda in December. So how was Uganda? It wasn't very different from Zimbabwe. The mm-hmm. weather, though, yeah, there's no winter. It rains, and it's humid, and it's hot. Mm-hmm. And I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the people, um, the food. Mm-hmm. Um, they eat bananas. It's not a complete meal without matoke. Oh, they love bananas. <laughs> they fry them, they mash them, they boil them. So when you when, when you came back from Uganda, did you try to do that? Like to fry them? Nope. Why? <laughs> you should have you should have uh, you could have introduced it to your to your siblings as well. Um I could have but mm-hmm. <laughs> um, my siblings and bananas. Uh-huh. Oh, they don't like bananas. I'm um, not. They don't like. They just like the basic. The basic one. <laughs> okay, so take us through your your preparation process. You know, before the competition in Uganda. I read a lot of books. Mm-hmm. Again, you really need to read. Mm-hmm. Um, for the first two spelling bees, they had word lists. Mm-hmm. Um, but for Uganda, they only had categories. No word lists. Yeah. No. They only had guidelines. Mm -hmm. So you had to find the words yourself. And I really learned the etymology, Mm -hmm. um, the languages, um, especially 54 languages, how to say mother, hello, thank you, please. Mm -hmm. Um, I had to learn all of that. And I really enjoyed, like, looking how the words were formed Mm -hmm. or what other words they were made up of. Mm -hmm. And some of them were French Again, there's a lot of Mm French-speaking countries in Africa. Yes. So, it was harder than the... It was difficult. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I I can imagine. So, how was it like, you know, uh, meeting other kids from other countries? It was a very good experience. I mean, we're all children. We're all the same. We all come from different countries, but at the end of the day, we're all just kids. Mm. So how was the spelling bee competition shaped? Um, how has it shaped your your life or well being? It really improved my confidence and my public speaking. I mean, before that, I have to say I wasn't good at public speaking. Mm-hmm. So it's time for you to show off your spelling bee uh, muscle, your spelling muscle. So um, shall we start? <laughs> Time for the spelling, guys. Spelling, spelling, spelling. So as I'm asking Tashinga here, you guys, I wanted to take out your pen and paper. So let's try this. Uh, probably, but 
Uh, we have got uh, Tashinga here. I just put my spellings. I just think some spellings. Then you compare it. I'm going here or at other So uh, I want you to spell uh, the word ex- 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 exasperate. Exasperate. Yes. E x a s p e r a t e. Exasperate. Wow, <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> well done. Well done. I know some of the guys at home are still trying to write this down but anyways guys don't worry it's easy it's easy um spell the word pneumonia pneumonia p n e u m o n i a come again p n e u m o n i a wow <laughs> within five seconds she's done she's done so the word mississippi i understand it's a state in the u.s right mississippi yeah mississippi m i s s i s s i p p i wow <laughs> and in the spelling bee, you're not allowed to say double S or double P. Oh, be or you have to say SS, yes. not double P, not double S. Oh, okay, okay. Um, spell the word encyclopedia. Definition, please. Encyclopedia. Encyclopedia. Exactly. Encyclopedia, yes. E N C Y C L O P E D I A. Sorry. Oh, I had said encyclopedia. So, encyclopedia, sorry. Yes. Come again. E N C Y C L O P E D I A. Encyclopedia. Mm. Mm. Then spell the word Calvocad. Calvocad. C A V A L C A D E. And someone is asking at home, what does Calvocad mean? It's like a motorcade for the royal family, but I can't say it's a motorcade. It's got horses, so mm-hmm. motorcade without the motors. Okay, so it's got uh, the horses there, so it's Calvocad. Wow. Guys, did you know that? Calvocat. We are learning. We are only, I'm also learning, guys. I didn't know this. I didn't know this, honestly. So, uh, spell the word spasm, uh, spasmodic. Spasmodic. S-P-A-S-M-O-D-I-C. Mm. Wow. I'm not going to go to Star, 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 star. I'm not going to Spell the word euphemism. Euphemism. E-U-P-H-E-M-I. Mm. Okay, come again. E U P H E M I S M. Well done, well done, well done, well done. Spell the word querulous. Querulous. Q U E R U L O U S. Come again. Q U E R U L O U S. Querulous. Guys, 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 guys. Ma wanu kuno kumuru kusit gwe reish kuno ko. Um, dagumu po last word drum guys. Ah, last word. Uh, fax mail. Fax email. Um, well, I've heard people say it as facsimile. Facsimile. Oh, yeah. F-A-C-S-I-M-I-L-E. Facsimile. Okay. F-A-C-S-I-M-I-L-E. Yeah, guys, my spelling up here. Do you have anything, guys? Maybe now we'll put in my word. Aeroplane. It's cheap, I know. Aeroplane. A-E-R-O-P-L-A-N-E. <laughs> that was so quick. <laughs> okay, guys. Wow. They, um, it, that is uh, Tashika for you as Zimbabwean. Ah, guys. Our spelling bee champion. Surely, I think she deserves um, awards. More awards. More awards. Um, so, Tashinga, uh, you like to lead a healthy and uh, a well-balanced lifestyle. Take us through your daily routine. It starts with a banana and it ends with a banana. And then maybe running and swimming in between. Okay. It starts with a banana and... Ends with a banana. Why? Um, well, before I train, I always take a banana. Mm-hmm. It relaxes me. Mm-hmm. It relaxes my muscles. Yeah. And so what's your, your, like, your favorite food? Sushi. Sushi. I know a lot of people think it's disgusting. Mm-hmm. But I really like it. And it's also healthy. I think. Do you tell us t- tell us the the ingredients. Um, salmon or tuna, and then maybe some sushi rice wrapped in seaweed, and then maybe some cucumbers and carrots. Mm-hmm. Wow! <laughs> so briefly tell us about uh, you know eating healthy. I know th- these days people are just eating junk food, what what what. But tell us about you know um, eating healthy. Um, I know everybody is a junk food lover from time Mm. to time, but I can say that everything, every, like maybe if you want to eat fries, take it in moderation. Mm -hmm. Don't 
um, overdo something. Like everything in moderation. That's mm. what I can say. Okay. What do you consider junk food? And um, any words for junk food lovers? <laughs> um, junk food is anything high in calories and sugar, salt. Um, I can say to them everything in moderation. Mm, in moderation. Guys, in terms of nyanyi, lola lola, pakufamba, pakulap. You also love swimming. How often do you swim per week? At least three times a week. Three times a week. So you like you, 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 you like to be uh, like Cass Coventry or what? Um, I'm not really sure now. Maybe I'll compete. Mm -hmm. So far you do it for fun, not for competition. I'm not really for fun, for mm -hmm. fitness and, okay, for fun. For fun. So you're not aiming for um, competitions and whatnot? Uh, maybe a bit later. Mm -hmm. Not now. Okay, 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 that's good. So what about your friends? You know, uh, do you have any? How do you spend time together? Um, what would you guys be doing with your friends? Um, well, since we're talking about friends, I really have to thank my friends. Um, they practiced with me when I was doing spelling, um, during break, during snack, mm -hmm. during lunch, during prep especially. Um, they read spellings and we practiced and mm -hmm. they marked. So, Oh, they marked. So are, are they also uh, spelling bees, good as you? Um, well, everybody's good. So mm -hmm. I think um, saying the words to me and marking them. So, mm -hmm. so it's like yeah. a genius club. You, are, you guys are like a club of genius. Oh, I see. So you also love photography. Tell me about that. How did all that start? Um, photography. I was very, oh, maybe I still am amateur. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember when we went to camp, I used to take pictures um, of my friends, of the wildlife. And then I decided to become a bit more professional mm -hmm. because photography is like an art. It's more social. You bring people together through yes. pictures. Yes, sure. So any photography work that you've done so far uh, that you can show us? Not at the moment. Not at the moment? You're working on something? I, I, I heard that um, you got a camera from your uncle. Um, from my grandfather. Oh, your, your grandfather, by the way, yes. Show, show us the camera. Wow. This is nice, guys. Wow. Um, this is the camera. It's a Canon 500D. Oh, with two lenses. That one is that one. Let me see this one. Okay. Wow, 75 to 300. Yo, it's a very nice lens. It's a very, very nice lens. Um, wow, you know, I also love photography, uh, videography. You know, this is why we're on camera. <laughs> yeah, but uh, good for you. So what are you going to use this for? Um... I'm going to start with some maybe simple photography, maybe sceneries, and then I'm going to mm -hmm. practice a bit more and yes. become more advanced and professional. Mm, I see. That's great. Uh, big plans. Um, so do you plan to pursue photography? Um, like, you know. um, I think so. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, I think it's a really good skill to have. You can keep it for your whole life. Mm -hmm. and you can apply it anywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. What type of music do you listen to? I listen to Coldplay. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't put Coldplay in any group. Coldplay is Coldplay. Their music is fantastic. Okay. Your favorite song? My Universe. My Universe. Uh, I, I think I have to listen to that song. I haven't listened to it. So I'll go and look for the song. Or maybe you can share. Um, what instrument do you play? I play the piano. Piano. So you're multi-talented, man. You're multi, multi, multi-talented. <laughs> so um, who taught you how to play piano? And, you know. On my first teacher, I think I started playing when I was in grade mm -hmm. two or three. Um, Mr. Mapie, he did the Zimbabwe marching band, I think, mm -hmm. and the Prince Edward marching band. Yes. 
and then later on it was um miss grace or miss maneuvering mm-hmm. she she taught me um actola mm, i see so who is your favorite um artist and why i'd still say coldplay mm. still coldplay yes why um i like the music it's very energetic and creative mm-hmm. okay so you also took up uh, french as a hobby why french atashinga um a lot of countries in africa speak french and my father and my grandfather travel a lot mm-hmm. but they sometimes struggle to communicate with other people mm. who speak different languages yes, yes so i decided to start with french and mm-hmm. then maybe i do swahili yes. and spanish and then maybe so how do you how do you say uh, my name is uh, Tashinga in French? Je m'appelle Tashinga. Je m'appelle Tashinga. Yes. Je m'appelle on a seven. Can I say that right? Yes. <laughs> okay. So um, you know I can say it's a lot of um, you know uh, it's a lot for someone of your age because I'm looking at you. You're just 12 years, and um, all you're doing right now with your age is just you know just with a tally. So um tell me um Tash how do you balance all this like from music art photography um, I mean swimming all this um school as well it comes down sometimes to discipline um my coaches for swimming coach Mike and coach Mac mm-hmm. or maybe let me say Mike Rankin and Mr Makoni they really teach and instill discipline yeah like let's say in swimming if you're supposed to breathe after three and mm-hmm. you do one that's mm-hmm. not being disciplined so yeah. it really teaches you to be straightforward with your things not to take shortcuts to mm-hmm. be disciplined mm-hmm. and how else i balance it i really can't say <laughs> it just <laughs> <laughs> it just happens so you're like okay i've got three hours to read i've got three hours to swim i've got three hours to maybe uh, draw Something like that. Is that how you plan your day? Um, more or less. Okay. So, um, anyways, to uh, kids of your age who also, you know, uh, wa- wants to be big. Um, what I can say to them is just go for it. Because you might be thinking, you know, maybe I don't want to do this or I don't really feel like um, I can be good at this or just have the freedom to try and also again mm-hmm. read and spelling bee is also a really good way like mm-hmm. um Zimbabwe spelling bee yeah. encouraging children um raising confidence levels as mm-hmm. well so just go for it if you feel like you want to do something just go for it yeah and uh, you know what do you uh, want to say to parents you know out there who have uh, we've got uh, you know gifted kids, but they do not show interest um, in their kids' uh, gifts. Um, like Yannick Sinner once said, he wished he he wished everyone had parents like his that could allow him to explore and choose what he wanted and didn't want. Mm-hmm. He said he really wished everybody had parents like his. Mm. So parents should give their children the freedom to choose and to explore what they really like in the end because maybe you can do 50 sports and you'll end up liking tennis mm-hmm. or you can do 50 clubs and you'll end up liking sewing mm-hmm. yeah i get it that's very powerful so when do you see yourself in the next uh, few years career wise i'd like to be a professional sleeper Wow, professional what? Sleeper. Why? <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Why, Tashinga? I mean, you get paid to sleep. Uh-huh. <laughs> A professional sleeper. Yes. Is it, is it, is it that healthy? I don't, I don't think it's healthy to be just sleeping. I mean, it depends. I mean, scientists uh-huh. um, studied the REM cycle and whatnot, so all you need to do is sleep, sleep. and they could do all the... <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you see Tashinga is crazy here. <laughs> Um, but mm. nah, maybe not. Um, actually, in the near future, I'd mm. like to be a pronouncer for the Zimbabwe Spelling Bee. Pronouncer. Yes, pronouncer. What does it pronouncer do? 
um, like they say, the words give the definitions, mm -hmm. um, use it in sentences. Okay, wow. Because you were spelling bee, I th I'm sure you can. Because some of these words that you were spelling here, oh, they're just tough words, big words. I can't even pronounce some of these uh, these words, honestly. So uh, you've got so, so many books here. Um, Binti, The Night Masquerade. And this one is called? Ikenga. Ikenga. And the other one is, uh, it's what? Binti. Binti again. Binti, yeah. And this one is Binti. Home. Home. You have read all these books? Yes. Wow. So, so to date, how many books did you? You have read how many now, as, as of now? Too many. Too many books. Guys, I think I'm challenged. I'll go back and start reading now. And then I tell us, yes, I'm reading, but I'm, I'm, I'm going back. Now, because one day, but like, you know, shun goods will be reading again. Uh, your parting remarks, maybe your goodbyes to our listeners? Um, I'd really like to say thank you for having me. This was very exciting. And um, to all the people that are listening, um, try something new. Mm -hmm. And never give up. Always be tenacious and mm -hmm. determined. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very powerful. I thought it was Tashinga Achereni. Uh, a versatile, vibrant girl uh, who is also a spelling bee. Uh, she's a champion, guys. I'm sure Amazoni that she's a champion. Um, artist, piano player, music lover, reader, your name, you name them. And So she's gifted and talented, and it's been fun having her today on the uh, Gita Skid Show. And we'll be back again next week, same time. If you know of any genius kid in your area, your hood, your country, please let us know. Well, we're Pachiro and Gwati Taurin now here on the All of Seven Podcast Show, the Genius Kids Show. I am signing out. Bye-bye. You haven't tasted rice until you taste Auntie Flo's Kilombero rice. It brings out the flavor and taste in every meal. It's priced right as well. $4 for 2 kgs, $10 for 5 kgs, and $100 for 50 kgs. Available at Eastgate Market Shopping Centre in Harare and Fidelity Life Centre in Bulawayo. Or simply WhatsApp us on the numbers on screen now. Auntie Flo's Kilombero Rice. Delicious. Tasty. Mouth-watering.